Okay, hello, my name is Ferenc Ax. I am a nerd, or at least I was a nerd. Um, not many children, I guess, have childhood heroes like Richard P. Feynman, a physicist and Nobel Prize winner, who once gave a talk about cargo cult science at Caltech. Caltech, sorry because um, I was very interested in this topic and confronted with it in my professional life. I want to make a little series about that, but first explain what is cargo cult science. Okay, we have to explain what is the cargo cult. Imagine a small island in the South Pacific during the Second World War. The inhabitants were comparatively primitive to our standards and suddenly the Americans decided to set up an airbase there. And this airbase was one of the largest operations during the Second World War, at least one of the largest logistics operations. And you can imagine all the time cargo planes came in and out and it was a large military base, so with many soldiers and what do soldiers do in their free time, of course, only? Um, for example, trading with the locals. And so, with time, the locals got some wonderful stuff they have not seen before. Um, unfortunately for the locals, fortunately for the rest of the world, Second World War was over one day and the airfield had to shut down, or so to say, the whole logistics operation. Now all the beautiful cargo was gone. So the natives thought, we simply try to call the cargo back. So they built these wonderfully constructed airfields out of bamboo, out of wood, they made even fire, uh, to attract the planes. So a whole mythology was formed around this experience of having abundant supplies due to um, the presence of these mysterious airplanes. I don't want to go too much into the details of the cargo cult itself. Um, the basic idea is a kind of religion formed around uh, this wonderful thing. So Richard P. Feynman used this idea to explain something. He wanted to explain back then that um, in science we can have something like a cargo cult too. That is just having the form but not the functionality. Like these airfields made of bamboo with the control towers made of bamboo, even you have a controller sitting in the so-called control tower, but um, he's not using a real radio, he is using coconuts on the ears and a box made of wood with little switches that um, have actually no function in an engineering sense they have a function in a sense of a cult. They have a sense like religious implements have in form of a religious uh, ceremony. So, but in science, we do not want to have religious ceremonies. We want to um, get knowledge. So Richard P. Feynman used this term, cargo cult science, for scientific approaches that are only on the outside, on the form scientific. They look like science, but in fact they are no, because they produce no results. Um, to be more specific, results in a way that you can test these results or theories or findings. Because there are theories like astrology, um, which is very nice, don't get me wrong, I don't want to attack astrology. Um, I just say it's not a science, because the predictions based on that um, are either not experimental 
experimentally uh, fals falsifiable or um, they are um, so weird that it is hard to think an experiment of. Or if there is a falsification or proof, there will be always an explanation why um, that explains this proof away. So, this is one central element of science he talked about. Something you claim should be testable by experiment and either you keep it or you lose it. So, since I said he was one of my childhood heroes, I thought I will grow up as a scientist in a wonderful world where this is clear. I was quite shocked in my re later years when I found out during my work at, uh, in the field of psychology, um, dealing with artificial intelligence, neural networks, later neuroscience, where I hold a PhD degree, that uh, this is actually um, a more important topic than ever in our times. Uh, Richard P. Feynman uh, is more actual than ever because there are lots of fields where um, there is a kind of cargo called science, where you have the form, where you have the re researchers in their white lab coats, where you have complicated formulas, where you have um, million euro or million dollar expensive devices producing impressive statistics and even more impressive computers are calculating very impressive things and producing today very impressive 3D graphics. The question is, is there any progress in knowledge? In many areas not. So to let make one point clear of all these ramblings I have here. This is not an attack against the generality of science or against all scientists or stock market analysts, which I also have to say some words, or marketing uh, experts. No. I only say in our times today, sadly, there is room for such um, there's plenty room for creators of cargo cult science. There are also the honest scientists and honest people who really try to drive in their profession to um, bring forward their field to produce knowledge. But unfortunately, there are also, a, you on the human side, very understandable, there are also the guys who just want to have quick money, quick reputation, girls, by the way, too. Um, so, what is it all about? The central question to avoid cargo called science is integrity. Integrity of the knowledge seeker to say, I am possibly wrong. If you find out if I'm wrong, you can do this and that. For example, unfortunately, this integrity seems to be missing in many fields nowadays, if I as I have experienced, and I would like to elaborate a bit in the further videos so far. Thanks and until next time.